Greetings, Mumford Mustangs. It is Ms. Parker, your speech teacher here at Mumford High School. I hope you are having a wonderful, beautiful, gorgeous, awesome, and amazing, magnificent day today. We are coming to our very close of the persuasive lecture. And so I do not want to waste any time. I want to get right into it. As a reminder, this is coming from Unit 5 in our Chapter 11 reading, which is available on Schoology and on the class website. Going back to our objectives, we have done so much in our time on persuasive speaking so far. We have discussed and we know the difference between informative and persuasive speaking, our different audience types, such as positive, opposed, or hostile, neutral, disinterested. All right. Uh-oh, I see we have a stop share. All right, back on track. Sorry about that, you guys. So again, talking about the positive, opposed, neutral, and disinterested audience, and we also talked about the characteristics of those different audience types and what is the most effective persuasive strategies that we use through our audience analysis, which there are demographic, attitudinal, and situational, and we can find that out through audience analysis, such as observations, sampling, and research. We discussed about using Aristotle appeals while we are constructing our framework for persuasive speaking and utilizing evidence and reasoning in those different evidences, the six that were discussed um, to create a logical argument. And we are going to um, discuss being a responsible persuasive speaker. But remember, we also discussed building and establishing prestige, which is building your ethos and being real and authentic and well prepared and having a genuine interest in your audience. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the very last portion of this lecture. So let your preparation show. Again, building and establishing. So not only are you building, but you want to have a continual show of preparation and prestige whenever you have a persuasive speech. And so that comes from competence and confidence, as well as sincerity, sincerity, excuse me, and goodwill. So how does this look? When you're competent and confident, you prepare and you know your topic thoroughly. For sincerity and goodwill, you express appreciation, all right? Appreciate that your audience is giving you the time of their day to listen to you. Next, to show your competence and confidence, Use evidence. We already spoke about the six different type of evidence and then support your materials, which is something that you do in any type of speech, right? You have to, if you're going to say some, state anything, make sure you're supported. On the other side, how do you show sincerity and goodwill? Speak directly to various individuals in the group. Maybe you want to point out someone specific that's there. And that's fine. You're not calling out names, but you're kind of intertwining them in your speaking. So you make them feel even more special. Next, for competence and confidence, refer to outside sources of evidence. Refer to outside sources of evidence. So when you show that there are different places and things and people that are um, upholding what you're stating, that is showing you are competent, you are ready, and this is not just coming out of thin blue air, but there are several sources, several places that they can find, they meaning your audience that can find this information and is true. Another way to show sincerity and goodwill on the other side of the coin, identify your interests and your experiences has something like a common ground technique to show that you relate to your audience. And again, that can be done through your audience analysis. Lastly, for competence and confidence, use your own experiences, okay? We talked about narratives for an example of evidence. That is a perfect way to fit that in there. 
And like I just stated, use common ground technique for sincerity and goodwill. All right. If you have any questions, please feel free to throw them in the chat at this time, or you can send me a message, jot it down, send me a message so we can make sure that you understand. I wanna make sure that everybody understands. But again, this is building and establishing your ethos throughout your entire mm -hmm. persuasive speech, all right? Now, last thing is being responsible. You have to be a responsible persuasive speaker. You have to be a responsible speaker in general, but you, we are focusing on persuasive speaking, so I want to focus in on that. Be, a res be responsible. What does a responsible persuader look like? It's a lot of information on the screen, okay? Your ability to persuade others shows that you have power and that has a responsibility that comes with it, okay? You need to utilize the correct techniques properly. So remember we talked about Aristotle appeals, using those appeals properly, make sure you're using your evidence properly with logical reasoning, okay? Big thing, do not lie. You do not wanna have any form of deceit when you're persuading others because it can be found out and when it does come out, you harm your reputation, all the ethos and prestige that you built is gone. You are there, then, therefore deemed irresponsible and unethical, which means your integrity is gone. No one will, will listen because they can't trust what you're saying. So how are some things that you don't do this? Don't present false evidence. Don't make up things so that it makes you look better. There's, no, there's plenty of information out there. We have the internet at our fingertips. So don't present false evidence. Don't plagiarize. This is a huge thing we have discussed. Cite your sources while you are speaking. We talked about that day one in that video when we discussed the different audience types. Do not plagiarize. Cite your sources. Don't appeal to emotions of listeners without having some fact into it, all right? Have, have facts always to support what you're saying. You don't want to pull on anyone's heart, heart strings. Just imagine if somebody's pulling your heartstrings and then you're all in and you, you're understanding and you're empathetic and you're sympathetic and you, you're wearing your heart and they have you all warm and fuzzy to find out that they lied. Oh, that's a heartbreak. And then don't say you're someone that you're not. We are not posing. We're not faking. We keeping it 100. We are saying authentic and true. Don't say you are the CEO and you just someone that's a manager. No point of that. Again, that ruins everything. So on a grander scale of things, when you think about someone speaking persuasively, think about also we are coming off of an election. There's always elections. And you have politicians and those in some type of power that is trying to get your vote. That can be harmful to a democratic decision-making process. And so you think about, do you know how being an irresponsible persuader can harm the democratic decision-making process? Remember, we are a democracy here at, in the United States. We are able to choose and elect our leaders. How can someone not being a responsible persuader, being unethical, plagiarizing, providing false news or false evidence or fake news, how can that harm the democratic decision-making process, the democracy of the United States? All right, that's just a huge grand scale of things, but it has an effect. And you can have the same effect on someone as well when you're giving out your persuasive speech. So make sure you're being responsible when you're being persuasive. Be responsible. Fact check, everyone does it. Don't plagiarize, cite your sources. That is how you can stay having prestige, okay? 
Now, we are at the end of our lecture for this unit. And here are some questions you should ask yourself to really know and understand or to find out and really understand all this information. Can you answer these questions without going back to your notes? Because you have looked and reviewed your notes and you've taken time to uh, take notes and do your check for understandings. Here are just eight questions. Can you tell someone the difference between informative and persuasive speaking? Can you explain three ways people can be persuaded? Can you tell us, and, and remember that three ways people can be persuaded is on that first slide, first day, when we talked about persuasion in general. What are the characteristics of the four different audience types and the effective approaches for each one, and even your mixed audiences? How do evidence and reasoning work together to create logical persuasive rhetoric? The most appropriate evidence for each audience type. And how do you build and establish prestige? And lastly, what we just covered, what is responsible persuasion? So at this time, I will please take any questions from you. Make sure you ask questions, make sure you understand. Next week, we are going to start our persuasive speeches before we leave out for holiday or winter break. So again, I thank you for your time. I hope you have a wonderful day. Please ask questions, request an appointment for office hours if needed, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Talk to you later.